Um, thank you everyone for coming to join this webinar on Accelerator AI. My name is Ben Hookway. I'm the CEO of Relative Insight, and I'm going to be hosting this webinar, um, which I am very excited about. Um, this is a fantastic new product that we're going to be kind of going through. Um, so I'll be talking about kind of why we ended up um, developing it in the first place. Uh, James Cuthbertson from Relative Insight will sort of get into some of the details about deployment and then I'm thrilled to have B. Jones from Deliveroo, who is the litmus test for this product uh, because she's been using it in anger. So she's going to be talking about how um, she's been using it and what impacts it's had on her work. So let's get going. So um, as I said, I'm going to go through the overview. James gets into the detail and B's the Beals the real star of the show. Uh, and then we are going to do some Q&A, so you can use the Q&A function in the webinar um, to ask your questions, and I'll be moderating that at the end. Okay, so the mandatory introduction to Relative Insight. Um, current customers will probably know this story, but I will tell it again. So we're a text analytics platform, and we get used uh, to understand how your customer experience metrics are moving. Um, and Everyone will know what their metric is sometimes, but often they don't know why it is what it is. And so the answer to that is normally in the text. And we analyze that and give you valuable insights from it. Um, however, we started in law enforcement. Um, and this is a sort of foundation of what we do is our heritage in law enforcement and the technique that we developed in it. So our original purpose was to catch people masquerading online. Uh, usually in a child protection context. Um, and so we know if you're a 13 year old girl or a 40 year old man doing a really good impression of a 13 year old girl. Now, from a data point of view, this is actually quite a difficult problem to solve because the bad guys are really, really good at it to the point where they're like 97% perfect. So if you were to take suspect language and put it through a standard text analytics algorithm, it would probably tell you it is a 13 year old girl. So it's not a good result. How do we solve that? So we developed a comparative technique. What we would do is take databases of verified 13 year old girl language from the security services. Then we take suspect language. And then what we do is compare them. And it's the differences that we would surface. So that 3% difference actually is the thing you really need to focus on. And this is core to everything Relative Insight does. By doing comparisons between data, we tell you the differences between language sets. Um, so those differences might be over time, how have things changed over time, or how are your different segments uh, differing, and so on and so on. Um, and we sort of define all of these differences as metrics as well, which is key. So you can be really confident when you're uh, putting actions uh, in your business that the evidence you've got is metric backed. So a typical relative insight world, um, text analytics is starting to uh, really um, go th right throughout all kinds of organizations. And typically for us, on the left, these are the sort of data sources and systems that we normally are taking data from. So customer experience systems, um, could be called uh, call transcripts. It could be chat logs, things like that. Uh, voice of customer, so lots of surveys, reviews, things like that. And customer journey, which could be kind of all of the above, where people are kind of looking to pull together a joined up view of the customer. And this is now sort of coming into Relative Insight, where we do our comparison, uh, we do tracking over time, uh, we enable reports, and then increasingly, actually, we're starting to. Um, export some of this into other systems. So we are increasingly going out to Tableau or to Power BI. Uh, we're also doing automatic reports and alerts to stakeholders in your organization with the results. And we're also feeding our metrics back into your original data to enrich it so it's more useful for other systems as well. So there's lots going on with Relative Insight. Um, and you know, core to our philosophy is like, why isn't always enough? Like a lot of people say that, you know, we tell you why your metrics have changed, but that isn't normally the end of the story. 
So you need to know why in time to make the change. There's no point knowing something, but being too late to do anything about it. You also need to know why with enough detail to be effective. So having a generic comparison uh, and understanding there's a sort of generic difference is useful, but you really need to get into the detail in order to invoke some real action. You also need to make sure that the right people in systems know why. Um, there's no point having this fantastic value, um, you know, sitting in some kind of silo in your organization. Uh, the people who can invoke some action really need to know it. Um, and all of this stuff really needs to be backed by evidence and metrics. Um, it, me evidence and metrics gives you confidence, okay? It allows you to like move forward with confidence to take some action. And you need to be able to do all of this at big scale. Um, and obviously that's where AI and our platform comes in. So that's our philosophy. But in terms of um, accelerator AI, um, this is kind of like how we see the world. Um, as long as I've been in B2B software, you know, it's basically databases with a user interface on top. That is like most B2B software. So that's like your data and information layers where you've got your raw data, which you then sort of process. And then you need some kind of user experience, user interface, dashboard to sort of organize all of that into information. But it gets really interesting, of course, when that information is sort of transformed into knowledge. You know, something specific that you know that you should go and do, and then obviously action. Uh, and of course, all of that knowledge and action with evidence. And where we see Gen AI as making massive strides is in uh, filling that and accelerating the transition from data information to knowledge. The faster you get to knowledge, the faster you get to action. And this is what Gen AI is enabling. And so this is why we're, we're so excited about it. And this is the philosophy that um, Accelerator AI was uh, developed with. So that's our sort of worldview. Um, I'm going to hand over now to James Cuthbertson, um, our COO, who's going to talk a bit more about actually how is this affecting our customers. Thank you very much, Ben. Um, so first things first is I just want to make sure that everyone's clear around what exactly the tool does um, and also what it will do for you more specifically. So I think the first thing to understand is that um, we've been specialists in text analytics through comparison for many years. One of the things that we've understood is that our users and analysts are very time poor in that they have a lot of different things competing for their time. And so what we needed to do was use the advancing technology available through AI to be able to allow them to create stories from their data at the click of one button. And so put really simply, the little schematic that you're seeing in front of you is a very simple example of what an analyst might do in Relative Insight, which, which would be comparing how consumers talk about brand A versus how consumers talk about brand B. Rather than picking through the system's categorization of language, topics, phrases, words, grammar, and emotion, you're now able to create an on-the-fly story from that comparison. So what it'll do is it'll give you all of the highlights, it'll give you metrics, so you'll be able to show your working when you're building reports. Now, as Ben alluded to, there are two very, very clear benefits of this new functionality. The first is that we're able to accelerate, hence the name U to Insight, and out of tedious and time-consuming work. And the second is that we're able to take that human error and subjectivity out of your insights process, allowing AI to create those storyboards for you. Next slide, please, Ben. So I wanna try and get real with an example. Um, and I understand that people on this call, whether they're our customers or not, have a number of decisions to make when thinking about their voice of the customer or CX or even market research journey. The first is that you can look at a data source and I've, I've chosen customer surveys here. And there are effectively four different decisions that you can make when analyzing your customer surveys. The first, as you can see in top left, is that you do nothing with them. And that's either born out of a lack of interest across your organization or a lack of time um, or something else, meaning that there isn't actually an appetite to analyze those 
customer surveys, customer feedback surveys. And so they go unanalyze. The second option, which has been like, you know, the, the classic is that someone in your team, um, some poor person in your team, or rather I should say, would have to manually um, trawl through all of those surveys. We're talking hundreds or even thousands in some organizations, read those open-ended responses and classify them into what they deem to be interesting themes. Now, the third um, new kid on the block, I've used ChatGPT as our poster boy for LLM AI technology. As you know, there, there are many others. Other, other AIs are available. Um, but let's say that ChatGPT has come, on to, come into our lives recently, allowing you to create simplistic summaries of open-ended text. Now, you can probably see where this is going in that your fourth option is good old relative insight down there in the corner. And so what I want to try and talk about is how we would ingest a customer survey. So in the middle of the screen, you can see a schematic which is representing many, many, many customer surveys. And this might be a you know, feedback survey where you're asking someone to say, on a scale of zero to 10, how likely are you to recommend our products to friends and family? And then why, effectively? So obviously, if you did nothing with this, you'd get nothing. If you manually classified it, you're good. it's going to be error strewn and extremely time consuming. If you use an AI summarization tool like ChatGPT, that's a really big jump forward from manual classification. But unfortunately, you're still um, faced with some inaccuracies that those systems present, as well as a lack of evidence and also metrics. And what Relative Insight will allow you to do through our comparative technology powered by AI is create those, those stories that I talked about a little, a little bit um, earlier in the presentation, but enrich those stories with evidence and metrics so that you're able to present senior stakeholders with a story that's backed up um, quantifiably which we know is extremely important. Next slide, please. So let's talk about um, a real use case. Um, so one of the, the areas that many of our customers are focused on now is CSAT and MPS scoring. Um, typically, they will have a, a really sophisticated and well-organized voice of the customer program, which will be running in surveys, typically um, in something like Medallia or Qualtrics, Alchemer, Question Pro, et cetera. Um, and they're probably doing a really, really solid job of reporting what their CSAT or MPS score is month to month. The challenge is that when they are queried on when things go particularly well or more commonly, particularly badly, what is it that's driving that change? And that's where this accelerator AI tool can be an extremely powerful thing to have in your back pocket because it allows you to deep dive into the reason why and come up with a really punchy story, which is backed by metrics and evidence. Next slide, please, Ben. So how does this work? Philosophically, um, we tend to sit on top of the types of vendors that you're seeing over on the left hand side, but it can also be um, increasingly we're seeing things like chatbot conversations and customer contact interactions. But those are some of the examples. Relative Insight automatically uploads the data that's being collected in those sometimes very large surveys through our um, Relative Flow product. What we do is we prep the data, we organize it and clean it. We create those stories that we've talked about through our Accelerator AI functionality. And then we're able to allow our users to create outputs in a number of different ways. What we've understood recently, especially recently with teams being asked to do more with less, is that senior decision makers do not want to be pushed onto new ways of consuming information. And so if we have senior decision makers that are already used to consuming dashboarding through Power BI or Tableau, then that's the way that we report. If they're interested in integrating it into a CRM of choice, such as Salesforce, then that's the way that we report. If they're very comfortable receiving PowerPoint slide presentations, and that's the way that we report. And then finally, an innovation that you guys will no doubt be hearing more about is our scoreboard product, which actually triggers email. And so if they're, if they're used to consuming email, then that's the way that we report. Thank you very much. Now over to B to, to, for the rest of the presentation. Yeah, so the, the star of the show. Um, <laughs> um, I will, I'm driving your slides. I think I forgot to mention that in the warm up. So. To say push now, oh, Ben, whatever you need me to do. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thanks for having me. I'm B, and I'm a senior insight manager at Deliveroo. 
And um, for anybody who isn't familiar with Deliveroo, we are an on-demand de delivery business. And we started off as a restaurant platform about 10 years ago. We now offer grocery and a shopping proposition as well. And we operate across a three-sided marketplace. So we connect consumers, restaurants, and riders. And I work on the consumer side of things. So whilst we're based in the UK, um, my role is a global one. And I'm focused on understanding consumers across our 10 markets. So including countries in Europe, the Middle East, and APAC as well. And if you go on to the next one, please. Cool, so before I go into talking about Accelerator AI, I'm just gonna set the scene by talking a bit about some of the challenges that our team faces and how working with Relative has really helped us. And I'm sure a lot of these challenges will be familiar to people on the call. So firstly, powerful and a numbers focused business, delivery is a very fast paced tech business. And we're very lucky in that customer data is readily available to everyone and used very extensively in decision making. And for us as a team, this means that we have the most success in landing our research and our insight when we can really marry together the qual with the quant. So being able to bring the customer to life, but also size it at the same time is really key. And relatives have been perfect for this. And I'll share some examples um, more specifically in a bit. Then making more of what we're already capturing. So we have several continuous data sources across the team. So for example, our brand tracker, and a research community as well. And these are such rich repositories, but when we're busy, it can be really easy to fall into that do nothing space, dare I say it, um, or just use them for a task in hand, rather than to cohesively look at what's going on behind the actual question that your stakeholder is asking that day. Um, so Relative really helps us to sweat everything that we've already got and to form a more rounded view as well of what our customers are telling us. And then finally, speed. Um, obviously, we could all do with more time. Um, and previously, we were using GPT to analyze some of our qual, which was a huge step change from working through things manually. Um, but now it's even quicker with relative. Um, we don't need to use prompts. We can easily compare to other internal data sources. And ultimately, it frees us up to spend more time with our stakeholders and actually to spend more time on the so what and working through recommendations with our stakeholders. Next one, please. Fab, so moving on to Accelerator AI, um, we've been working with it for a couple of months now. So I'm going to share you with you a couple of examples of how we've already been using it. They're quite early tactical examples, um, but hopefully they will inspire people on the call and get you thinking about how you could use it within your own business. So firstly, digging into our brand tracker, if you pop onto the next one, thank you. Um, so we have our brand tracker and it captures quant data through a survey every single day to give us views of how Deliveroo and our competitors are perceived across all of our markets. And one of the things that we really want to understand and share with the business is what's actually preventing people from using our category. Now, we have a survey question in our brand tracker on category barriers and there are attributes to select. But interestingly, within the UK, we saw a really high percentage of people selecting the other option. And this then generates free text. So people essentially typing what's preventing them from ordering with us or one of our competitors. And to give you a sense of scale of this data set across this question and others in the tracker, we're generating tens of thousands of open end responses each month. So historically, hugely time consuming to analyze, but also lots of richness in there and super, super valuable. So what we've been able to do here is actually export the open ends that are coming through this barriers question, put them into Accelerator AI and really lift the lid on what's going on in a matter of seconds. And that output has been twofold. So we've got a quantified summary now of those themes telling us what's going on in the data. And we can really quickly use that along with the rest of the survey output to better understand barriers and also share it in a way that really resonates with our stakeholders. They love seeing those numbers alongside the customer story. And the summary with customer feedback also shows us how customers are talking about these barriers, the words that they're using and what we're missing and that's really helping us to understand what we need to tweak in the existing survey to make it clearer, helping us to reduce that other 
option and be more efficient in the future. So ultimately on this one, Accelerator AI is not only helping us to uncover new insights, but it's actually helping us to be more effective and more efficient in the future as well. Next slide, please. And diving into a little bit more detail on this example, within the tool, we were also able to analyze this barriers data by customer type. Um, students are a really important audience to us. They're using the category regularly, but we also see them as the affluent professionals of tomorrow. So a group we really want to win with. Now putting their answers to our barriers question into Accelerator AI has helped us to understand them in more detail and to uncover some new insights as well. So firstly, we were able to quantify some of what we already assumed. Um, probably unsurprisingly, they're quite value sensitive and promotions are something that were pulled out as being really important to them. And actually a lack of promotions can prevent them from using the category and actually fails to attract them to order. And through using Accelerator AI for the first time, we could actually back this up with numbers and evidence to make this point to stakeholders. And then something that was really exciting as new news to us was that our in-app experience is far, far more important to students than it is to any other customer group that we've analyzed in the tool. Um, so Accelerator AI was able to pick up on some of the terms that they were using. So things like talking about ease, talking very specifically about tracking their order once they've placed it, and then talking about our overall interface, the design, the look and feel as well. So the tool grouped them together and then highlighted experience as something vital for us to look at to make sure that we win their spend. So a really important data point for us um, and something that we will be passing on to our experience team and our designers as well. Next one, please. Cool, so the next bit is a little bit around customer mindset. If you pop onto the next slide, thank you. Um, so as I mentioned, we've got a customer research community. Um, this is almost like a Reddit forum that we can use for research. And we use it in two ways. So the first would be to answer live business problems. So if a stakeholder comes to us with a question and needs a quick answer, but we also use it to keep the panel engaged and to speak to them about current events, how they're thinking, what they're feeling. Now, the latter might not always be directly linked to a question from stakeholders, but doesn't mean that it's not useful. There's huge value there, but it does mean that we're not always proactively going there and, and looking at it um, when we're short on time. But through Accelerator AI, we can now really quickly get value from that data and actually pass it on to the relevant teams. Um, so if you go on to the next one, thank you. Um, so to give you a bit of an example of this, we've just finished a summer of sport um, with both the Euros and the Olympics. And we ran discussion rooms on these, just asking our customers whether they were engaging with the events and how. And I put the output of this, so lots of customer comments into Accelerator AI and was really quickly able to get a very meaningful summary of what was going on there. So on the Euros, we could see that actually most customers were telling us that they like to watch matches at home. And I was also able to really quickly see what they were eating. So over a third actually opting for pizza there, but also talking about things like snacking, things that are really easy to cook and to eat and things that they can share as well with whoever they're watching with. And so for us, this tells us that clearly there's a big opportunity to serve those people who are watching at home who might want some food um, and might want to order in around the football. And then it also tells us what sorts of food is going to appeal during those moments as well. So things that we could be thinking about emphasizing in any comms. And then on the Olympics, um, really interesting. So a real interest in innovation came through and there was lots of conversation about the new sports that were including, included this year. A lot of love for the Olympics was actually driven by a real connection to athletes and hearing about the experiences of the Olympians directly helped to form a real emotional connection to the games. And what was really interesting to us is that they saw an opportunity for us to do more in this space. They felt like it would be really on brand for Deliveroo. 
And actually Accelerator AI summarized their ideas. So things that were coming out were around um, special themed deals and potential partnerships with sports people too. So you can see here, we've been really able to create a story very quickly. And it's this kind of context which could otherwise be lost, but it's so valuable to our marketing team when it comes to campaign planning, but also finding inspiration as well. Um, and hopefully across both of these examples, it's super clear that we're getting a lot of value from the tool, um, both in terms of sweating our existing data and getting the most out of it, but also saving us lots of time as well. So I think I'm handing back to James for questions. So actually, I'm I'm going to. Um, that's you. fantastic. Thanks very much, B. Um, by the way, do you know what the foods associated with the Olympics were and whether they sort of differed? I'm I'm dying to know what breakdancing was associated with in terms of. <laughs> Not by sport, but that would be very interesting. The breakdancing would be fascinating. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we've got some. Uh, questions coming in uh which i will answer some and put out others okay first one um it looks like the platform integrates with lots of other different systems uh does that mean it can help orchestrate other parts of the analysis process um so yes i think that what this question pertains to is probably the diagram i put up when i sort of began talking about these different types of data sources that come into the platform. Um, what we have seen recently is maybe, I don't know, two years ago, a customer would have maybe one data source going into relative insight for analysis. Um, but increasingly, especially in the last 12 months, there's been a real uptick in the number of customers who are putting multiple data sources in. Um, so as, as B said, you know, there's maybe surveys coming in. Uh, there's the um, sort of forum, private forum, data coming in, uh, reviews coming in, social coming in as well, you know, it's pretty typical. Um, and what seems to be driving a lot of that is partially to get a, a more rounded view of the customer experience uh, and partially around getting more of a customer journey view. So um, what's the customer experience when they're browsing? What's their experience when they sort of sign up for your service? what's the sort of post sign up uh, experience like and so on and so on. Um, so there's a lot of that going on at the moment because and because relative insight is independent of the data source, it means that we can really easily pull in all types of different data and be kind of one centralized repository for all of that analysis. So I hope that was the question. That's the question I answered. Um, Okay, next one. Uh, what is scoreboard? I'm not familiar with that. Do you have more information? I am going to let James talk about that because you're particularly enthusiastic about this. Yeah, this is like, this is the thing I'm most excited about for a while, uh, both, both professionally and personally. That shows what how much I've got going on at the moment. Um, no, all jokes aside. So um, as Ben mentioned, what we've seen is that people's desire to get into the platform is diminishing because of the number of things that are competing for their time. As kind of B explained, she's got a lot on. She's having to wear loads of hats, fly around the world, do all these amazing things. And so how long has she really got to get into the Relative Insight platform? Those hours are being squeezed. And so we understand that. We want to help our customers. And so, as I mentioned, we're now able to help um, our customers by allowing them to report natively. And what I mean by natively is the way that they're used to. And so again, just to go back over what I said, so basically that, that tends to be three different methods. The first is a dashboarding tool that they've already implemented. Think Tableau or Power BI, which are the main ones. So we can feed our insights into those, those dashboarding tools. The second option is good old fashioned PowerPoint, which clearly still has its place because that's how we've presented today. And so I know that a lot of insights teams and a lot of CX and marketing teams um, still report using PowerPoint. So of course, all of our visualizations are kind of PowerPoint export friendly. But to get to the, the answer, um, we're now able to configure and trigger emails, which can be either just one or multiple versions of the same email to different stakeholders across your organization. And that tends to be a regular 
trigger. So for example, every Monday morning or the 10th of every month or after every home game or after a certain event. And the reason that we went in this direction was because we understand how important it is to get those insights to senior people as quickly and as frictionlessly as possible. So yeah, you're going to be hearing a lot more from us about um, the scoreboard innovations, which we're really excited about. Thank you. Great. Um, okay, uh, B, you're up next. Um, what made you switch from GPT to Relative Insight? Good question. Um, so I think as a hyperlocal business, it's really important to us that we understand things at scale. And actually doing that through GPT is still quite time consuming. So to give you an example, we would want to be able to understand how customers were talking about us in our brand tracker um, and compare customers in Manchester to customers in Bristol, for example. And actually that kind of nuance can be picked up really, really quickly through the tool. And we don't need to prompt it based on hypotheses. We can put in things like region um, as metadata and then the comments and the tool automatically tell you what the differences are and you can do the same with brands. So it's actually been really powerful for almost telling us what we maybe wouldn't have asked it had we used GPT um, and using it in that way has helped us to uncover lots of new things. Excellent. Okay. So just follow up on that then as also, I mean, I guess there's more of a, we're more of a process, like we're more part of the workflow than sort of copying and pasting stuff into GPT and sort of hitting analyze and all that kind of stuff as well. I would imagine as well. Yeah, absolutely. So now it's part of our process that whenever a customer discussion room finishes, we will upload it into the tool and then that will be our summary. And the same with our brand tracker whenever we get those open ends every month. Cool. Super. Right. Got another one for you. Uh, you mentioned that you're in a, And I don't know the answer to this, by the way. So <laughs> you mentioned you're in a global role. Um, have you uh used accelerator ai in any languages other than english i have um uh, okay right yeah so i have used it in french um we have an english customer community and a french one as well and actually historically it's there's just been that extra step with the french community and that we've had to translate it it can also not quite pick up on quite um what the customer meant to say it can come across um, not quite grammatically correct. And actually now I can just upload the French output into Accelerator AI into Relative um, in exactly the same way as I would the English and get a great output that I can share with the team. So it's kind of another step that's been removed from the process on translation. Um, and actually it read perfectly as well. There was no sort of um, dodgy grammar or anything coming right. through. Fantastic. I'm glad to hear it. So I didn't know the answer to that. So I'm <laughs> very happy you've said that. That's great. Um, okay, no. Um, next question. Um, how do I go about seeing Accelerator AI? Okay, uh, that's a fantastic question. So, so uh, two ways to do this. Um, if you're a current customer, uh, you can contact your account manager and we can set that up for you. Um, or you can go to uh, relativeinsight.com and you will find a call to action blue button saying, uh, give me a free trial. Uh, if you click on that, uh, fill in for information, we'll get in touch and we'll, we'll, we'll walk you through that. Okay. So just go to the website and uh, uh, hit the button and fill in your info. Um, next one. Uh, would your platform work at live events to obtain real time insight? Interesting question, this. Um, potentially, I think it depends on the amount of data that is kind of coming in to your event. So um, if you're coming in with maybe, you know, a sort of trickle of language, maybe, maybe not. If you've got lots of language data coming in through a live event, uh, then yes, it would. We'd be able to do that. Um Another question uh, is score is back to scoreboard. Is it already available? James Cuthbertson. Yeah, so we are currently rolling scoreboard out through our existing customers. Um, so we had um, some of our um, pro sports customers go live with the tool um, at the beginning of their season, which was really exciting. So we were doing post game um, feedback triggered um, for a number of our American sports brands, those being 
um, the ASU Sun Devils, um, which was really exciting, and Alabama Crimson Tide. Um, so yes, it is. Um, exactly um exactly how you go about getting that in, it included in your package we just need to talk you through so again this the best route is if you're not an existing customer just please get in touch and we can talk you through how we would go about implementing that and then ben's going to absolutely love the aws question i'm going to love the so yeah <laughs> the, the, the next question uh, can i purchase relative insight through the aws marketplace uh, so the answer is yes. For those who don't know what that question even means, um, Amazon AWS is um, AWS is Amazon Web Services. Obviously, it's one of the you know massive cloud providers, um, and so you can actually buy software, which is um, we run on AWS at Relative Insight. Um, and quite often, large corporations have annual licenses with AWS, so your your AWS spend can be put towards um, relative insight and that can be done by buying relative insight through what's called the aws marketplace um, so these are big budgets uh, normally with uh, uh, some spare capacity so uh, you can go and do that yeah so we're we're fully paid off aws marketplace member okay um let me just double check we don't have more questions coming in Okay, and we're coming up to 40 minutes anyway, so that is perfect. I think that is it on the questions. Um, I want to thank um, everyone who's attended. Uh, thanks for the, the, the Q&A. Um, thanks to James for his enthusiasm with Scoreboard, but mostly thank you for B for presenting a really great presentation on, uh, on her job and, and what she's doing with Relative Insight. Thanks for having me. Um, my pleasure. Thank you, everyone, again. Um, Again, uh, if you need more information about Accelerator AI, it's just go to the website, uh, click on uh, the call to action, and we will get in touch. And with that, we'll close it down. Thank you, everyone, and have a fantastic day. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, guys.